Rogues in Diablo 4 are very fast, very agile strikers who rely on blending melee and ranged attacks to clear any obstacles in their way. They can even mix in a variety of like tricks and traps to kind of tilt the situation in their favor. Now they come in multiple flavors. You can play as a trapper, who's a rogue who specializes in kiting groups of enemies into traps. And these traps are going to slow, cause high amounts of damage, do all of that fun stuff. Or if you want to be more of like a slugger who wants to stick close to enemies, twisting knives to bleed out your target. Or you can be a marksman who picks things off from a distance to stay out of harm's way. All of these things are possible with a rogue, which makes it one of the most versatile classes in the game. So if this sounds anything like you, the rogue may be a class that you want to check out. So let's talk about the basics. So like I mentioned before, rogues are quick fighters. They like to use energy to fuel their attacks. Now this energy is a resource that'll slowly regenerate over time, or you can use consumables to add some giddy up to that recharge speed. You can also use basic skills to build that energy back up as well. Now rogues are built to deal high amounts of damage through their core skills and passives. So you wanna make sure to use those as often as you can, and it's gonna help make quick work of really kind of anything in your way. Now, rogues also have multiple movement skills that allow them to sort of zip around the battlefield a little bit quicker than some of the other classes. But they also have things like slow, chill, freezing enemies, stunning crowd control effects, all of these things at their disposal to help lock down enemies. So when you can't, you know, get away with movement skills, you have CC to help kind of slow enemies down. And then lastly, rogues are sort of a jack of all trades. You can use straightforward attacks, you can lay traps, you can slow down enemies, you can lock them down with CC, or you can just blow everything up with incredibly heavy damage. So truly, they are a very, very flexible class to play as. But while rogues have all of those kind of at their disposal as strengths, they also have some key weaknesses that might be deal breakers depending on your play style and what you're looking for in a class. So for one, they're squishy. They're gonna require investing into dodge, dexterity, all of that stuff to avoid taking large amounts of spike damage. So for this, you wanna choose dexterity as it grants extra dodge chance and increases skill damage. Now they also require positioning and setups to be most effective, right? So combo points is something we'll be talking about here in a little bit. But in addition to that, if you aren't able to debuff your enemies or you don't have access to certain skills because you're out of range, your damage is gonna drop off of a cliff. So they do require a little bit more thought and positioning than maybe some of the other classes. So these are all things to consider when choosing a rogue, but honestly, with all that being said, let's dive deeper into this class and learn more about how it ticks. So one, the rogues do have a special trait. Um, they can equip two one-handers and a ranged weapon at the same time. Then as you use abilities, you can swap between those weapons depending on what skill was used. So certain abilities will require a certain weapon and unlike barbarians in their arsenal system, you can't choose which weapon to use for each ability, but you will still receive the stat benefits of all of your equipped weapons, whether they're being used or not. So let's talk about class specialization before we get into skills. So starting at level 15, the rogue can unlock their class specialization with a quest line called True Potential Starting in Ministad. Now this is gonna give you one option, the other two options will unlock at level 20 and 30, but the one we get access to is combo points. So combo points are going to cause your basic skills to generate combo points, and then certain skills will consume these for extra effects. The other two specializations you'll have access to later on are Inner Sight and Preparation. Inner Sight is going to cause marked enemies to fill up an Inner Sight gauge. Now when this gauge is full, you're going to gain unlimited energy for 4 seconds, meaning you can just spam whatever core skills you want because you have unlimited energy. For preparation, for every 100 energy you spend, you're going to reduce your ultimate skill cooldown by 4 seconds. Then, when you use your ultimate skill, it's going to reset the cooldowns of all of your other skills. So this is one that I'm really looking forward to. I want to see what people can do with this because it just seems like there's so much potential built into that, especially if you're using high energy cost skills. Okay, so let's talk about the skills themselves for the rogue. So just like all of the other videos, if you've watched the other kind of final preview videos for the classes, they sort of follow the same trend. So you have basic skills. These are low damage skills that are zero cost and they're typically used to regenerate a resource or have an effect. Core skills are the motor that drives your build and your rotation. These are the things that make your character go. These are going to consume resources to deal larger amounts of damage than basic skills and they typically hit more enemies per cast. Agility skills are movement skills. These allow you to reposition, move through enemies or gain advantage of enemies. 
Subterfuge skills for the rogue are a cluster of skills that'll add utility to your build. These can be offensive, defensive, or a mixture of both. Imbuement skills will imbue your next two attacks with extra effects, and they possess a cooldown. You can do things like add poison, cold, shadow to your attacks, that way you can inflict a specific element and take advantage of maybe some weaknesses that enemies have. Ultimate skills are your game changers. These are high impact skills, they have a long cooldown, and you can only choose one of these at a time. Ultimate passives are similar to the ultimate skills. You can only choose one at a time, and they're extremely powerful, and they sort of help define the playstyle or the build that you're after. So choosing the right one is going to be very, very important. So next, let's talk about some examples of each skill for the rogue. So for basic skills, we have Heartseeker. This is a basic ranged attack that's going to fire an arrow that seeks an enemy and deals a small amount of damage, but it's going to increase your critical strike chance against that target by 3% for 4 seconds and stacks up to 15%. Then we have Invigorating Strike, which is a melee attack that'll deal a small amount of damage and increase energy regeneration for a short duration. And lastly, we have Blade Shift. This is a melee attack that'll deal a low amount of damage, but allow you to move through enemies for a short duration. This is great for getting boxed in and you need to get through things, so you can use Blade Shift, move through enemies, and get out of trouble, essentially. Then we have our core skills. So next we have Barrage. This is a ranged attack that's going to unleash a barrage of arrows that expand outwards. Each arrow has a chance to ricochet to additional enemies. Then we have Twisting Blades. You're going to impale an enemy on your blades and then make them take increased damage while they're impaled. After a short duration, your blades will return to you, damaging any enemies on their way back. For agility skills, we have Shadow Step. You're going to become unstoppable and quickly move through the shadows to stab your target from behind. Then you'll also gain movement speed for a short duration after. Caltrops are going to cause you to leap backwards and throw caltrops on the ground, damaging and slowing enemies. After agility skills, we have our subterfuge skills. We have Dark Shroud. You're going to surround yourself with five protective shadows and gain damage reduction per active shadow. Once you take damage, a shadow is then consumed. Poison Trap is going to place a trap that'll deal a large amount of poison damage to enemies in an area. Imbuement skills, we talked about these a little bit earlier, but these are going to cause your next two attacks to deal a specific element of damage. So we have poison, so next two attacks are going to deal poison damage and apply poison that deals damage over time. Shadow is going to cause shadow damage and infect enemies, causing them to explode on death, dealing damage around them. Then we have cold, this is going to deal cold damage and chill targets and this does increase damage to crowd controlled enemies. So choosing the right imbuement for the right step, for the right build, that's going to be something that you really want to kind of think about and take advantage of. After imbuement, we have our ultimate skills. So we have shadow clone, you're gonna summon a shadow that mimics your actions for a duration and deals a portion of your damage to targets. Rain of arrows is gonna cause arrows to rain down over an area twice, dealing large damage each time. And lastly, we have death trap. This is a trap that's going to deal a large amount of damage to enemies in an area when triggered. After your ultimate skills, we have our ultimate passives. So for these, we have momentum. Melee is going to grant a stack of momentum for a short duration if you hit a stunned, immobilized, or frozen enemy, or if you hit any enemy from behind. When you reach three stacks of momentum, you gain increased damage reduction, increased energy regeneration, and increased attack speed. We have victimize, so you're going to gain lucky hit, and then when you deal direct damage to a vulnerable enemy, you have a chance to cause an explosion and deal extra damage to your target plus nearby enemies. Then we have Exposure. So here you're going to gain Lucky Hit again, and then Damaging Enemies has a chance to reduce your cooldowns of your trap skills by 25% and drop a cluster of stun grenades that stun and damage enemies. So overall, the Rogue is a powerful class. It does require you to have a little bit of strategy and an understanding of how their core mechanics work, but once you do, you can maximize their potential and be an absolute wrecking ball on the battlefield. So the question is, is the Rogue class for you? Are you planning on rolling another class? Let me know in the comments section below, but as always, this has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time.